Okay, you tell me this. I put a 900 foot pound torque gun on this nut, on this bolt, and it's still on there. Oh my gosh. I might have to heat it. That's so stupid. Ugh. This was a pain to get off to, getting this pulley off, getting the dry bell off the chipper. Clutch life. Damn. How to get to the clutch on a chipper. This works for all models of chippers that have a disc drive on them, disc chip, okay? Uh, first things first, you need to take off the belt cover. Um, there, on this one, there were about eight um, 14 millimeter uh, nuts or 9 sixteenths um, holding this sucker on, and there it is. And uh, after you do that, on this model, um, to get the drive belt off, your model might be a little bit different, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty similar. But to get the drive belt off, okay, let's just reset this. There are holding bolts on the pulley, um, on the smaller pulley, the pulley that's attached to the clutch area, okay? Uh, you unzap the holding bolts that are attached to the pulley that goes directly to the drive line to the clutch to the engine. All right, and that's usually the smaller pulley. So I unzapped those and it, it was seized on there pretty tight. Um, you're, you could take a three pound hammer and tap the other side of the pulley. Be careful not to bend anything and it will pop off like so. And if it doesn't, you'll need to get a pulley puller and pull it off. Um, this one was really seized up and I'll tell you uh, how I know it's been seized up. But anyway, that comes off and then you don't have to worry about these bolts that are holding the drive line in place um, or the clutch um, uh, lever. You don't have to worry about the bolts that are holding those in, but on this side, there is a spring you need to pop off. And this is very, very rough, but I just noticed there's no videos out there that show you how to remove a clutch on a chipper just in case you want to do your own maintenance so you pull the uh you you might be spring loaded um like mine you pull the spring off and then you take off the attachment that goes to your drive line clutch pulley lever right here so you were free there um okay good good before you do that though i forgot to mention this is disengaged and this is engaged you want to engage the clutch first and then you unpull the the bolts here okay all right now we have direct access to the clutch the bell housing anyway and what we're gonna do here is unzap all your bolts i had these horrendous phillips or not phillips but uh what are these called i forgot what they're called not hex but uh, Allen, I had these Allen heads on there and they're eight millimeter. Um, one of them was so hard to get off, I, uh, I had to heat it up with a torch and then it started to wiggle a little, but that just broke the nut off. So I had to drill it out. So make sure you have a drill on standby just in case you need to drill out a bolt. This one popped off. It was just so seized on, it, it would not come. Anyway, I got all of them off and chances are you've never done the clutch before on your chipper so your bell housing is going to be seized so i got a pry bar and i stuffed it in the crack well actually before that i better show you what i did i went around the bell housing with your three pound and just gave it a tap all around make sure you break up the dirt maybe just put a piece of wood onto the bell housing and hit it with the hammer you know if you don't want to put ding your your paint anyway after that, I had to find an area to get my pry bar into the seam of the bell housing and I tapped the tip of the pry bar into the chipper, uh, into the bell housing seam and it separated the bell housing for me and now it's open and we can pull it off. All right, so now we have the bell housing off. Uh, no wonder this thing slipped a lot. Look at all this crap in here. It's never been cleaned out. It's just a mess. Um, yeah. So we're going to be replacing the throw out bearing here. Uh, it's not bad, but I'm just going to get a new part for it anyway. And we are going to take the clutch plate 
or the friction plate off and see what it's looking like in there. Okay, and I just unfastened the oh camera. I just unfastened most of the bolts. I left some of them in to hold the clutch plate in, and I pulled out the friction pad here. So we still have some meat on this friction pad, but it's ground down to the point at which you were gonna want to replace it anyway. Uh, see these indicators, these wear indicators, these lines right there? Um, they're almost flush. And if they're almost flush, it's ready to get replaced. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, yep, there's the clutch plate. And here's the friction pad. And if you pull it out, on the engine side of the friction pad, you have the flywheel part number, and you can go get it at your local auto, auto parts store. Thank God. I'm still. So I have reason to believe that this clutch has, ne or clutch plate, or the friction pad has never been replaced. Way back in March of 2002. So yeah. Oh, 2006, sorry. March 2006, because the year comes before the day. So since 2006, it's 2019 now. So yeah, it hasn't been replaced since 2006. So I'd say yeah, it's time for a replacement. When you're putting it, when you're putting it all back together, uh, right here, we put the clutch back in. Uh, you need to torque your bolts to 24 foot pounds. Uh, the six bolts that we took off, holding it in. 24 foot pounds. Also, you need to put a little bit of Loctite on there, or uh, uh, what you call. Loctite, yeah, just just Loctite. Use some Loctite, use some blue, um, and just make sure it's 24 foot pounds and you should be all cherry. Put it all back together and you're good to go.